12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Tuesday. We have so much to talk about today. We obviously know 2020 is coming to an end. There's been so much that's happened this year, but we're going to focus on some of the positives. We know Sarah Costa is a big animal lover. I love animals. So that's why we're going to start with some of the best animal stories. KSAT.com. Okay, so these are more of wildlife animal mm. stories. So our web team has compiled an awesome list of these, some of my favorite ones. Um, we've talked about murder hornets a million times. That's on there. <laughs> um, one was a beautiful, rare find, but super dangerous. The blue dragon mm -hmm. was discovered on Padre Island National Seashore. I grew up on pins. And um, so if you've ever been stung by a man of war, they say that this, the blue dragon, is because they eat man of wars, they take the man of war sting and they, their sting is like crazy more painful. So I can't even imagine. That's terrifying. Um, so you go terrifying. I'm going to go happy story. Uh, remember there was a missing chicken, a pet <laughs> chicken from Fair Oaks Ranch, uh, stowed away in an Instacart delivery truck. And luckily they were actually able to find the chicken. Well, the, and they were able to find the chicken's owner. Mm, true. Oh, my God. Also, this alligator story, I was just talking to one of our directors yesterday. I don't know why I'm terrified of alligators. Um, I keep <laughs> I having, like, nightmares about... Who is terrified of alligators? But I keep Who's having like, oh, I nightmares about alligators. Alligator. Well, one was found outside of a San Antonio home. Mm -hmm. Ugh, oh, my goodness. A five-foot-long alligator. That's not even that big of an alligator. That, I'm, I'm five feet tall, Max. Statement stands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's see, what else we got? A uh, woman this. catches a nine-foot tiger shark in Corpus Christi. And then this was like a weird sea creature that mm. they found also on pins. Um, ended up being an eel. A lot of weird things were washing up on pins because of, I guess, all these storms maybe. I don't know. But yeah. all that, you can find all of them, all these weird One more before stories. we go. I, okay. know, I know Oriana, our producer, wants us to wrap. This one, if you are scared of alligators, this one really is going to give you nightmares. 18-foot, 9-inch, record-breaking python caught. That's it. Nope. That, of course, of course, where was that? <laughs> that was in Florida. Yeah, of course in Florida. <laughs> I was waiting for that. All right, let's take a look at today's 9 and 9. More than 66,000 Americans have died in December from COVID-19. That's more than any other month since the start of the pandemic. Hospitalizations also at record levels with 40% of all ICU patients having the virus this past week. Bars in Bear County must close their doors and all businesses currently operating at 75% have to scale back to just 50% today. This is because of the ongoing surge in hospitalizations here at home. A measure to increase stimulus checks from $600 to $2,000 could be brought to the Senate today. The measure was approved by the House yesterday. It all comes after President Donald Trump demanded larger stimulus payments. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and her husband, Doug, are scheduled to receive their first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine today. A transition team official says Harris's vaccination will take place live on camera in Washington. The White House of Representatives has voted to override President Donald Trump's veto of a defense bill known as the National Defense Authorization Act. The Senate is expected to consider overriding the veto sometime this week. An Ohio police officer has been fired after the deadly shooting of a black man holding his cell phone. A body camera footage shows the officer shooting 47-year-old Andre Hill and then waiting several minutes to administer first aid. President-elect Joe Biden says Trump administration officials are blocking his team's communications with the Defense Department and Office of Management and Budget. He warns that the interference could harm national security. After being grounded for 20 months due to a pair of deadly crashes, Boeing's 737 MAX is set to return to the skies with United States passengers later today. American Airlines will use the jet on a round-trip route between Miami and New York. The Texas Longhorns are facing the Colorado Buffaloes tonight in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Kickoff from the Alamo Dome is set for 8 p.m. And that's today's 9 at 9.
Bowl season, baby. Let's go. Max, you kept putting me on the spot earlier this morning. Oh, yeah, Sarah, who are you rooting me. for tonight? Yeah, that's not fair. Texas or Colorado, who you I, got? You know what? I know Justin's definitely not rooting for Longhorn since he is an oh, Aggie. Oh, right under the bus. Whoa. No, I never said that. Never okay. said that. Okay. You're not saying the alternative, though. I mean, it's known you're an Aggie, so it's okay. It's true. It doesn't mean I always root against the Longhorns, though. So who are you rooting for, Justin? Oh, well. I don't know. I, I I don't know that I like the Buffaloes that much either. I'm rooting for a good game. That's what I'm rooting there for. There you Aww, go. Cop out answer. How about rooting for some good That's weather? Politics. Yeah, we uh, we do need some. Uh, I, I think changes in the forecast. We're going to get it. We're going to get some rain in the picture. Some good rainfall, and I think that's what we've been needing most of the year. 65 degrees right now. Dew point is at 60. South southeasterly winds at about 18 miles per hour. It's it's warm. It's humid. We've had a few showers this morning. We'll continue to see that. At least slight chance through the day today will top out in the mid 70s. Yet again, yesterday was fairly warm. Uh, right now, the radar shows that we do have some showers out there. Everything is light, uh, tracking off to the north at a pretty quick clip. But don't be surprised if you do get uh, a few showers today. And you can see the cloud cover, some breaks, especially off to the east. So where you see more sun, you're going to see warmer temperatures this afternoon. I think 70s will be fairly widespread. Here's some bad news, though. Mountain cedar numbers came in this morning, surprisingly jumped up to 12,540. That's enough to put it in the very high category. So heads up there. If you're suffering from allergies, there's your reason. Mountain cedar, it is uh, mountain cedar season. 74 degrees, the high today, 20% chance rain across the board, but our rain chances significantly go up as we get into tomorrow and Thursday. We'll talk more about that and still that small potential for some wintry weather in the hill country. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Taking a look at the roadways right now. It was a busy morning for Samuel King. He was breaking down a few crashes because of the slick roads. If anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Some top stories we are following today. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is once again asking for your help to track down a capital murder suspect. They're looking for 18 year old James Alexander Miller, and that's his picture right there on screen. Deputies tell us he's wanted in the murder of 14 year old Bobby Carter and 18 year old Robert Smith. It happened on December 17th in the 7300 block of Rubens Drive on the northeast side. Investigators say Miller and another man approached the victim's vehicle and started shooting. The second suspect was identified as Jalen Deers and is already in custody. If you have any information about Miller's whereabouts, call the number on your screen right there, 210-224-STOP. Crime Stoppers also looking for a man accused of robbing a restaurant on the northwest side. So police tell us back on December 17th, the man on your screen went into the Misiera Jalisco in the 1900 block of Bandera, demanded money from the cash register. Investigators say the suspect had his hand under his sweater and made it look like he had a gun. Police say the man got away with all the money from the register, drove away in a gray colored SUV. If you have any information that can lead to an arrest, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number again, 210-224-STOP. Police are also looking for a man who they say robbed a Northwest Side convenience store overnight. It happened around 3.30 this morning at the Stripes in the 7200 block of Eckerd Road. That's near Bandera. Police tell us a man with a red cap, brown shorts, and a black mask held the clerk at gunpoint. They say he stole some money and beer and got away in a black Mazda. So as we mentioned in the 9 at 9, Bear County businesses now operating at 75% capacity. They're going to have to cut back down to 50% capacity today. And all this comes because COVID-19 hospitalizations continue to rise across the county. The cutbacks mandated in Governor Greg Abbott's executive order from October. It allowed certain businesses to operate at 75% capacity unless they were located in an area with at least seven consecutive days where the number of patients hospitalized with the virus exceeded 15%. Bear County officials say that threshold was met on Sunday. The measure also suspends all elective surgeries. For a list of which businesses are affected by the restrictions and which ones are not, just head to KSAT.com. Well, in your morning headlines, we will show you how close police officers came to that RV that blew up in Nashville. And how to get rid of the Christmas tree once you're done with it. David Sears is joining us. David, we talk about this a lot. What's that, that unofficial date where you can put away all the Christmas decorations? Uh, January 1st. Okay. Sarah Costa, not happy with that answer, but we'll talk about it in a little bit. New Year's Day, because you end the whole week and time to pack them up and put them away for next year. There you go. I agree. You don't agree? No. What's Technically, out? it's January 6th, but we'll talk about it later. January 6th? 
Hey, this is a new video from the scene of that bomb exploding in Nashville Christmas morning. This is police body cam footage. Look how eerily close that these guys came to this RV right there, right across the street. That was just moments before it exploded. Seconds later, the bomb explodes. Officers head for the scene, going into danger, directing residents to safety. The scene still a disaster. Crews working to clean up the mess left behind by this man that is 63 year old Anthony Quinn Werner, the one who blew up himself in that uh, in that explosion. Also injured eight, damaged more than 40 buildings. Investigators still looking for a motive. Now, one of Warner's neighbors says he was a loner and they actually talked a few days before Christmas morning. I asked him, is Santa gonna bring you anything good for Christmas? And he smiled and he said, oh yeah, I'm gonna be famous. Nashville and the world will never forget me. Loud said he actually thought Warner was talking about something good. The building that took the biggest hit was the AT&T building that was a transmission station. No word yet on if that was the intended targets. All right, big snow in the north and the east, a lot of rain out west, a huge downpour in Southern California, causing some major problems. Rescue workers trying to get inside that culvert right there. This is video from Orange County Fire Authorities. Those rescue workers easing their way into that culvert. There's actually a person in there. They ended up rescuing two people, a man and a woman. The woman taken to the hospital there in L.A. with some leg pain. L.A. got more than an inch and a half of a downpour during a very quick rain event. All right, now onto the snow. And this is something you don't see every day unless you're in Alaska. That's dog sledding right there on the sidewalk through a Cleveland, Ohio neighborhood. You have a couple of huskies, a sled and some deep snow. Why not? That is Amy Onyak taking her dogs out for a little Christmas spin on Christmas morning after a big snow the night before. Amy and her daughter Ellie have actually been involved in dog sled racing for several years, but this was special since they could sled right on their own street on Christmas. Yeah, all of our neighbors were out trying to shovel themselves out and they were just laughing because they know what we do it. It was really, it was a magical surprise to wake up and see all this awesome snow and, and just to be able to have fun outside and, you know, especially with everything that's going on now, we're, we're just trying to make the best of it. First off, you gotta love her mask, right, with the dog. Amy and Ellie actually traveled to Michigan for dog sled races, but not this winter because of COVID, so it was good to get a little workout in right there in the front yard. And finally, when Christmas is over and you're done with that tree, you want to get rid of it the easy way. What do you do? <laughs> of course, you shove it out the window. Just make sure you get all the ornaments off the tree first, and you got to make sure that there's nobody standing down below when you let it go. Oh, my goodness. There you go. That's... Well, you know, I guess it beats carrying it through the house and getting all the needles everywhere, so you just yeah. toss it out the window. If Convenient. it fits out the window, there's a little struggle it's there. Like a buy it's like if there was a goodbye 2020 video. That's it right that's there. It. That is perfect. And you do that on January 1st. No, you do it on January 6th. <laughs> why January? Why Three January 6th? Three Kings Day. Three Kings Day. And you make a baby cake. You make, you make the King's cake and it has a little baby in it. She was our Christmas historic correspondent <laughs> on GMSA. You know what? You know what happens is you say January 6th and then it's all of a sudden January 7th and then it's mm. the 8th. And, you know, February rolls around. You still got lights on the house. Your neighbors are looking at you going, what's Sarah going keeps the it? lights on full year. No, I don't. No. <laughs> Starting rumors, Max. <laughs> Thank you, David. Anyway, so I'm now 9-11, 65 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA at 9. The countdown to the new year is officially on, and a legendary rock band is helping us kiss 2020. Goodbye, a preview of the Kiss New Year's Eve concert and how you can enjoy it from home. And we mentioned on the 9 and 9, Texas, Colorado facing off in the Valero Alamo Bowl tonight. David Sears joining us talking about those safety measures in place at the Alamo Dome right after the break. Girl power, two words that can be used to describe recent headlines about the number of women appointed to President-elect Joe Biden's cabinet. How a local group of young girls are feeling inspired by the news. Glass ceilings shattered over and over again this election cycle as Kamala Harris became the first woman elected vice president. A record setting number of women have been appointed to President elect Joe Biden's cabinet and every position on the White House communications team will be held by a woman. These headlines have been life changing for young San Antonio girls who tell Courtney Friedman it's boosted their confidence that one day it could be them. We have announced members of our administration. Political affiliations aside, this election broke barriers. The first vice president who's a woman, who's a woman of color, 
who's a biracial woman that is so monumental, not only for me, but for so many women across the country and across the world. I know as a minority, it's inspiring to see someone like me take a, such a strong role in politics and stand up for their beliefs and equality. High school senior Lauren Gonzalez and sophomore Amaris Morin are both in the Girls Inc. leadership organization. And led by women who know what it's like to be or to pursue careers who are mostly dominated by men. Maureen wants to pursue a career in STEM, Gonzalez in law and politics, not afraid to create their own space in industries where women are underrepresented. And especially for little girls who think that, oh, I could never do that. But I think Kamala Harris and, you know, the number of women who are in Joe Biden's cabinet, that is just so amazing for a young girl to see that I can do that. And whether it's in STEM, whether it's, you know, in law, policy, whatever. Maureen says what's happening now should be the norm. Is it amazing? Yes. But is it something that should be expected from now on that we're represented just as equally? Yes. These are two of the many young, brilliant, bold girls determined to make that happen. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Fantastic story. All right. So. We may or may not have started a rumor about the possibility of snow, or as mm -hmm. you like to call it, the chunky rain. Uh, chunky but rain. Mike Osterhage <laughs> actually said this morning, maybe not here in San Antonio, but the hill country could see snow coming up. That is the, the idea, and this is the fine line we, we walk, because, you know, the difference of miles can make a difference here. But we think that the snow probably stays out of the forecast for San Antonio. As you get up in the hill country, yes, it's possible. The bigger story here, probably through all of this, is going to be the rain, heavy rain in some cases, and this is exactly what we needed. So let's start off with the current temperature, 65 degrees, cloudy skies here in San Antonio. South southeasterly winds at about 18 miles per hour, gusting to 26. And that's ushering in quite a bit of moisture this morning. Temperature wise, mid 60s in most spots, 65 Uvalde, 68 Creso Springs, 63 in Kerrville, 61 right now in Rock Springs. And looking at the dew points, they're in 60s. So this is more spring like air that has surged in out ahead of our next storm system. As far as cloud cover goes, and this is going to have a huge bearing on where temperatures go today, uh, we've still got quite a bit of cloud cover here across San Antonio, but notice as you go east, Skies are clear for now. Places like Nixon, Gonzales, you're seeing some sun, so that'll boost temperatures a little bit. I think we'll see mostly cloudy skies uh, again today. We had some showers this morning starting to let up a little bit. We're not looking for any significant rainfall today. That's going to hold off until tomorrow, but you see some of that rain surging north, and then you get some of the wintry weather up there across the plains already in advance of this storm system, which right now sits back out over the uh, Vegas area and it's uh, already a, a nice looking system, but what's interesting about this is how far south this area of low pressure is going to move. Uh, typically, you don't see these lows dig this far south and uh, move right over top of us. This is a good pattern for us when it comes to rainfall. It gives us the energy we need. So this is sort of the difference with this storm system as opposed to the last couple that we've seen. So here's how it plays out. Uh, as we get into this afternoon, this evening, mostly cloudy skies, there could be a shower or two. Here comes the front tomorrow. This is 7 o'clock. We've got some showers out ahead of it. Front probably doesn't make it here until late afternoon. When it does, there will be enough moisture and, and warmth out ahead of this thing where we could get some thunderstorms. It's some decent looking thunderstorms, especially east of San Antonio. So there is a risk for some stronger storms tomorrow. But the rain really starts to fill in tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. That's when that low starts to move into South Texas. And you see the widespread rain here. I think we could still even see some rumbles of thunder, even though it will be much cooler. And then you notice the purples and blues. That's that wintry weather we've been talking about. Places like Rock Springs, maybe Kerrville. And then as you get up towards San Angelo, that's where the best chance for wintry weather will be. Not here in San Antonio. Even as we get into Thursday, that is the case. Uh, this is midday. A lot of the rain starting to move out. Still may get some lingering snowflakes. Rock Springs, maybe to Fredericksburg. And there could be some accumulation there. Uh, the numbers should be on the low end, maybe one to two inches. But uh, uh, the bigger numbers are going to stay up towards San Angelo. By Thursday evening, a lot of this is moving out. Clouds will start to clear out. 
as we bring in the new year. Uh, it's looking pretty good. We mentioned that marginal risk of severe weather mainly east of San Antonio tomorrow. That's one thing we'll be watching. And then, of course, the, the biggest story I think out of all of this is going to be the rainfall. One to one and a half inches potentially here in San Antonio and then two to three inches for some of our far eastern counties, even along the border, we could pick up close to an inch. So this is great news considering where we are rainfall wise for the year. Forecast for today, Texas up to 74, mostly cloudy, some light rain chances there. And then tomorrow's 70, 40% chance of rain. But notice we up it to a 90% chance Wednesday night into Thursday and still some lingering rain Thursday. High of only 44. It'll be a blustery kind of damp day. But New Year's Day looks great. 62 and sunny, guys. I didn't even know that you had Hill Country wintry mix on there when I made my comment, for the record. Yep. Great minds, Justin. Okay. And ours, too. <laughs> 921, 65 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Are you ready to kiss 2020 goodbye? Yes. Legendary <laughs> rock band Kiss is hosting a massive live stream concert on New Year's Eve after the break where you can get tickets. This SA Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Jason's Water Systems. Hi, I'm Ben with Jason's Water Systems, and this is my family, my wife Tanya, my sons Easton and Lake. On behalf of our family, we want to give a heartfelt thank you to all of America's heroes, our servicemen and women, our health professionals on the front line, and of course, our veterans. Without you, we wouldn't have a holiday, so thank you. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> The self-proclaimed hottest band in the world is looking to end 2020 with a bang. KISS are performing an outdoor concert on a custom-built stage at the Atlantis Dubai. What better time than New Year's Eve to stay at home, stay safe, don't be stupid, and go out there and make stupid mistakes by drinking with strangers. Social distancing measures will be in place, but the main audience will be watching at home. People are safely distant. There are going to be masks. Uh, you won't know who you're flirting with because their faces will be covered. You see what I did there? That's like a dad joke. We intend on having a great time in celebrating the next year coming in. It's going to be a better year for everybody. The vaccine is starting to go out. It's going to be better for everybody. Stay indoors. Stay safe. Party with us. We'll have the biggest party on Earth anyway. You may as well enjoy it safely. Come on, people! Outdoor performance has the band aiming for world record levels of pyrotechnics. We intend on literally lighting up the sky and setting off uh, pyro even before, before the first chord. Rocking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And tickets to watch the performance online available at kiss2020goodbye.com. Love the creativity. Yeah. All right, there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. That's right, the college football season coming to an end. That means it's time to go bowling. We have bowl games to talk about. David Sears joining us again with a preview of tonight's Valero Alma Bowl. And most of the headlines this year centered around the pandemic and the presidential election, but there were plenty of other important stories worth taking a look back. A New Year's preview, that's next. Welcome back, it's 930. 2020 was a year that at times seemed like it would never end. It still hasn't, we got three more days. That's true. I feel like March and April just went by so slowly. Yeah. All right, well with a slew of major news stories, including, you know, the worst pandemic of most of our lifetime, well, this year we'll go down in the history books. CNN's Nadia Romero looks back at some of the most significant moments. 2020 vision describes seeing things normally, but what happened before our eyes this year was in many ways nothing like we've seen before. Consider a global pandemic growing worse with surging U.S. cases, hospitalizations and deaths. A presidential election with a conclusion. They delivered us a clear victory. But not a concession. And wildfires, winds, plus the most active Atlantic hurricane season on record. It's been a, a record-breaking, very busy season in 2020. These stories could have defined 2020 on their own. 
Yet they had plenty of company beginning just three days into the year. President Donald Trump ordered a drone strike to kill top Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani. He was planning a very major attack and we got him. Iran called it terrorism and attacked bases housing U.S. forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. A California helicopter crash in January shocked the world. As the chief indicated, there were no survivors. Retired Los Angeles Laker Kobe Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter Gianna died in the crash with the pilot and six more passengers on their way to Gianna's basketball game. In February, former Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein was found guilty of a criminal sex act and third-degree rape. Charges against Weinstein fueled the global Me Too movement. He is sentenced to spend 23 years behind bars. Women often took center stage. The loss of trailblazing Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to pancreatic cancer. The appointment of Justice Amy Coney Barrett. The election of Kamala Harris as the nation's first female and black and South Asian vice president. Yet the pandemic was always present. Unemployment jumped with jobs gone. Concerts canceled, cruises, Broadway, the Summer Olympics. When some sports resumed, athletes played in front of small or non-existent stadium crowds. People wondered, when would they see crowds again? In May, they found out. Cameras captured Minneapolis police arresting 46-year-old George Floyd. For nearly eight minutes, now former police officer Derek Chauvin kneeled on Floyd's neck, even after Floyd became unresponsive. Chauvin and three other officers now face charges related to his death. The renewed calls for racial justice, which started with Floyd's death, continued. Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, Rayshard Brooks, more tragic deaths that fueled a movement. In America, you can peacefully assemble. Black Lives Matter Plaza took shape in Washington, D.C., while Civil War monuments came down in Richmond, Virginia. The nation lost civil rights icon Congressman John Lewis. 55 years after Bloody Sunday, when he began his quest for equality, he took his final trip across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in his casket during a weekend of events celebrating his life. Ignition. Lift off. The space program took off in new ways in May. SpaceX marked the first successful commercial launch, taking two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station from U.S. soil. Four more astronauts went to the ISS in November, and people of all ages decided it was time to try TikTok. The Trump administration ordered the Chinese social media platform to find a U.S. owner, while millions kept using it. The app says this video got a record 528 million views, perhaps for people needing to take a break from watching all else 2020 had to offer. I'm Nadia Romero reporting. This had 520 million views. I don't even so. know what, I, I haven't seen that video. Am I the only one that hasn't seen it? No, I had no idea what it was. I actually didn't even know what was happening in it. I don't think Justin has seen it either. I know. No, Justin's a big TikTok guy. That happened. I haven't <laughs> seen it. Uh, it looked kind of funny, but I have no idea what was happening in it. So there you go. <laughs> We're all old. You calling me old? <laughs> I'm calling all of us old. <laughs> I am old, but uh, let's take a look at the radar. We've got uh, some showers out there right now, uh, mainly north of San Antonio. Everything's tracking off to the north and everything's pretty light. We're not expecting any sort of significant rain today. Big picture here with the satellite, a lot of cloud cover off to the west, not much to the east. So you're going to see some warmer temperatures where you get more sun, and that's going to be mainly east of I-35, at least for now. We expect that the clouds will fill in a little bit. Uh, it'll be a mostly cloudy day. We're still waiting on our next storm system. It's already chilly up there in the panhandle 35 degrees but the rest of the state really relatively warm when you're talking about late december here 65 degrees here in san antonio and the forecast texas up to 74 today some slight chances of rain but those numbers will really increase as we get into tomorrow night a lot going on some thunderstorms again maybe a little bit of wintry weather up there in the hill country we've got the latest update coming up here in just a couple minutes guys well, the annual Alamo Bowl kicks off tonight, but there are a lot of changes due to the pandemic. And thanks to the rising number of COVID numbers, the Spurs also making some changes when it comes to fans. David Sears joining us again. So, David, what's the scoop? Well, you know, usually we'd be having big pep rallies and there would be all kinds of fans from Colorado and UT all over downtown San Antonio. And this year you had nothing. Barely few fans hanging out enjoying the uh, river walk and what beautiful weather we have man they'd be out on the golf course all these people will be here especially from colorado where it's cold
It's true. Be down here and join it. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we're just going to have a, a football game tonight. Although it ought to be a pretty good matchup. The Longhorns and the Colorado Buffaloes with a few fans in the stands. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first off, obviously it's been a very disappointing season for the Longhorns. However, they did finish on a little roll, three in a row. But tonight, they're not going to have five of their captains, five guys elected not to play, not to continue the season. The good news for Tom Herman is his seat is a little cooler. Usually he's on the hot seat about every game over the last couple <laughs> for, the, for the season, but maybe his seat will be a little cooler and he kind of relax and enjoy the game. They were, what, 6-3 and three coming into this game tonight. The Colorado Buffaloes, remember they're in the Pac-12. They started the season a little later than the Big 12, so they were only 4-1, and one, but they're on a roll. They won their last four straight. They lost the first game of the season, won four in a row, and that's what got them here to San Antonio for the Alamo Bowl. They're, both teams are pretty excited about being here and playing one more game. Offensive line will, will look a, a bit different as well as uh, some different positions, but you know we, we played uh, a game with similar personnel uh, our last regular season game, and, and uh, we've been practicing all week with, with the same guys in the same positions. So um, you know feel good about what we're you know the guys that we'll be able to put out on the field. We did lose some depth in certain areas. Um, but that's, you know, everybody's dealt with that, you know, over the course of the season. And um, it's kind of one of those things that can we continue to battle, Justin, until the season gets over, you know. So, uh, but we're, we're healthy enough to play, you know, at least after this morning's test results. And, and we'll, be, we'll be ready to roll tomorrow night. Yeah, Colorado lost a couple of guys last week to COVID-19, so they won't be, uh, be able to play tonight. The kickoff is set for 8 o'clock. It'll be broadcast on ESPN. And, you know, you, you hear the negative, oh, we've lost this many games. It's been a rough season. This, this is. But here's the positive out of it. They played. They got to go out there and play some football games. Even if it was only five for Colorado and even if it was only nine for Longhorns, they get one more game. So it turned out to be a pretty positive when you think about you know, yeah, there were some COVID problems with a lot of teams across the country, but they still were able to get out there and they were still were able to play. And fans like us were able to take our mind off all this other stuff going on and just focus on some football for a while. So that was pretty good. And they even allow some fans in the stands in some stadiums across the country. There will be some fans in the stands tonight, but the protocols will be very, very tight. So remember, if you're one of the lucky ones that gets to go to the Alamo Bowl tonight, you're going to be socially distancing, you're going to be wearing a mask, you're going to have your temperature checked before you ever walk in the door. They're going to do everything they can to make when you order food a little easier so you're doing it touchless. So I, it, it's going to be a different kind of experience, but it will be an experience. That is for sure. Kickoff once again for those not going, watching on TV, 8 o'clock. Now, let's get to the Spurs. Yesterday they announced that they will not have fans in the stands for now. Remember, they wanted to have fans in the stands starting on January 1st when they host the Lakers for that second of L.A. Spurs back-to-backs. But because of the rising numbers of the COVID-19 pandemic around San Antonio and the South Texas area, the Spurs elected to not have fans in the stands, at least for right now. I think they're going to reevaluate mid-January or so and see where they stand, see where those numbers are. But, you know, when you consider... They played all summer long in the bubble, mm -hmm. and these guys were fully protected, and now they're out of the bubble, so they're still dealing with families and, and acquaintances, and, and, you know, so far, so good for the Spurs. But, you know, they're doing what they can to protect the players and all the administrative folks, so can't really blame them for not wanting fans just yet. That time will come. We'll get to see it. But at least we get to watch them on TV. I got two things. I know Oriana wants us to wrap it up. Uh -huh. First off, what did you think about the Fiesta colors? I love them. I love this them. Is, this is awesome. This yeah. is this is this is beautiful. I can pull out stuff in my closet from like the 1970s and 80s and 90s. <laughs> yeah. and then, David uh, living his best life. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Keldon Johnson, your thoughts so far? Stud. There we go. Leave it at that. Thank, Thank you, so David. Much. Yep, you bet. I'm now 941, 65 degrees now. You're watching GMSA at 9. A fascinating discovery in centuries-old ruins as experts dig up an ancient eatery and still find food inside. After the break, CNN's Jeremy Roth has that in today's Take a Look at This. Archaeologists have unearthed an ancient snack bar in the ruins of Pompeii. You know, the Italian city destroyed by a volcanic eruption in 79 AD, as seen here in this movie that isn't real. Experts say this is the first time finding a complete example of a thermopolium. 
It's a hot food and drinks shop that would serve the equivalent of ancient street food to hungry Romans passing by. It was adorned with colored frescoes depicting animals that were likely on the menu, and get this, traces of 2,000-year-old food that included pork, fish, snails, and beef were found in terracotta jars that lined the shop. They also discovered plenty of food shop accessories like decorated bronze drinking bowls, ceramic jars used for cooking, and wine flasks and bottles. It's not gonna last 2,000 years, but a Massachusetts family is hoping, weather permitting, that this handmade home hockey rink will last all season long. The Bongiorno family is enjoying this brand new backyard oasis, courtesy of their grandfather, Papa Tony, a Navy veteran who hand built everything you see. It was more hours than I anticipated putting into it, and a little heavier than work than I thought, but it was a lot of fun. The project took months and 17,000 gallons of water to complete, but the Bongiorno say the grandkids were blown away. His eyes were huge saucers, and we can skate, we can skate. Papa Tony said he wanted to do something for the kids during these unusual times, and from his big heart and skilled hands came this larger than life labor of love. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. All right, so they have the uh, the ice rink out there. Justin, is it going to be a good day to go ice skating? Yeah. Are we going to see any ice <laughs> in San Antonio? No, 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 no. Keep going, Sarah. Let's see how punny <laughs> you can be. <laughs> uh, no, none of that. Uh, I suppose there's a few places where you can go ice skating, but it's indoors, right? Not anything outdoors here in South Texas because uh, we're likely going to stay above freezing here, and it's just going to be rain for us. Let's go outside for you right now. We've got uh, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures at this hour, 65 degrees, 66, Denton, 66, Cali, 66 at Randolph. Look at the wind, south southeasterly at about 18 miles per hour. That's dragging in a ton of moisture. So it's humid out there, and that's resulting in a couple showers too. Satellite picture shows we've got a lot of clouds over San Antonio at the moment. Not as much as you go east. Gonzales, you're looking at quite a bit of sun, at least right now. I think that may change a little bit later today. New Braunfels, some cloud cover for you. Temperature-wise, 66 there. 65 at the airport, 61 Bernie stays, 66 right now in Hondo. You get out west, 68 in Del Rio, 63 Rock Springs, and uh, mostly cloudy skies there as well. Temperature or dew point wise, you've got dew points in the 60s, so that's in the muggy category. Uh, for late December, these numbers are pretty high. We've got the moisture in place, so now we're just waiting on this storm system to get here to squeeze out some of this moisture. And we're, we're confident that we're going to get some pretty decent rain around the area. Just not today. It'll be more so tomorrow and Thursday. Radar right now does show a couple of very light showers working their way north into the hill country at this hour. A little bigger picture, uh, you can see the rain and snow up to the north across parts of Kansas and uh, rain for most of Oklahoma and uh, north Texas. But our storm system is still back off to the west. You can see it nicely here on water vapor. And notice the direction it's moving. It's almost going south right now. This thing is digging south and it's going to take a pretty subtly route and it uh, likely will move right over top of us and this is this is a good thing as we mentioned earlier this is why our rain chances are as high as they are as we get into this evening frontal boundary starts to move into west texas it'll start to create some showers and storms and that line will slowly work its way towards us tomorrow there is a decent chance for, with some storm for some storms along this front as we get into the late afternoon and a few of those could be strong uh, tomorrow, especially east of San Antonio. But I think our best rain chance actually comes overnight, Wednesday night, the Thursday morning. As that upper level low starts to move in, we could see showers and maybe even some thunderstorms. Even though it'll be cooler, I still think we could see some rumbles of thunder. And then you notice the pink and the blue. That's where we could see some wintry weather mixing in as well with some snow on the back side of this thing. Uh, this is Thursday midday. There's still some snow there. And it could go as far south as, say, Eagle Pass initially early on Thursday and then fill in, to, uh, in the hill country throughout the day before things move off to the north pretty quickly. Again, here in San Antonio, we're just expecting rain at this point, a cold rain. It'll be sort of blustery and cool and damp on Thursday. Tomorrow, marginal risk of severe weather, as we mentioned. It's low end, but it is there. We've got to mention it. And then as far as the rainfall potential, and this is probably the biggest story of all, one to one and a half inches here in San Antonio, two to three inches across some of our eastern counties and even out west, close to an inch. And a lot of people are asking about the potential for snowfall. 
I think you're talking Del Rio, Rock Springs, Kerrville, maybe down the Eagle Pass and then off to the north. The best chances of, of snow or of wintry weather are going to be up there around San Angelo and the Abilene area. But we'll, of course, keep you posted. And uh, temperatures will be in the mid 70s today, mostly cloudy, just a slight chance for rain. Tomorrow, 70, 40% chance, 90% chance though, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, and then a 70% chance of rain Thursday, 44, and then clearing out nicely for New Year's Day. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now you're going to want to jump online right now to purchase this smartwatch because they are flying off the shelves. The Chronowatch multifunction smartwatch is compatible with iOS and Android. It has 16 different functions. It gives you all of your messages and call notification. It helps you track everything from your blood pressure to how many calories you burn to your heart rate. It even tracks how well you're sleeping with all of the focus on staying safe and preventing COVID-19. It also monitors your blood oxygen levels and you can wear it anytime. It's sweat proof and waterproof. Now it comes in four different sleek colors, the rose gold, the blue, the black and the gray. And you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars because the retail price, while it's $1.99, you get the case that deal for $39.99. That's an 80% discount. To get this deal and many more case that deals, head to caseatdeals.com. Well, they're called the Defenders, but have you ever wondered how the KSAT 12 investigative team got their name? Well, you'll definitely see the answer in their one-hour investigative special tonight at 7 p.m. It features stories on everything from problems with pilot safety to little-known risks to your children at parks. Investigative reporters Dylan Collier and Tim Gerber showing you in nine stories how their focus is protecting you, your loved ones, and your community, both by informing and getting those results. I was just glad that you guys got involved. I can breathe a sigh of relief now. You'll also see stories on COVID help for the unemployed problems with the justice system and allegations of scams. It's all coming up in the Defenders Protecting You, a case at 12 one hour special again airing tonight at 7 p.m. All right. On a much lighter note, we have such a good story. You know what? 2020 has been a hard year. It's coming to an end, but we do have these fun, lighter stories. This one. Coming from the Alamo City, Greg Popovich writing to a 14-year-old super fan. I love this story. So basically, um, Bentley Baker of Central Connecticut actually took time to write 14 letters by hand to Pop, and Pop actually responded. Mm -hmm. So here's some of what Pop said. He said, uh, so Bentley actually asked for advice. He said, to Bentley, make education and honesty your priorities. You'll be happy and at peace. Keep a strong work ethic. Be humble and empathetic. Justin, you want to read the last part? Where are we here? Last line. Last All right. Line. A sense of humor is mandatory. All the best. Me again, Coach Pop. And Bentley actually... <laughs> He hopes to be a coach for the NBA or front office NBA person. Best of luck to you, Bentley. If Pop, if you ever watch our show, we're big fans. Big fans. He's you got a to... sense of humor, too. He does. We you like want to say that. anything about the weather? <laughs> uh, rain. It's good. Good chances. <laughs>